The History of Ethiopian Ancient Manuscripts In Ethiopia, parchments have been used as writing materials since the first millennium BCE. In early periods, people also wrote on stone steels and blocks. This large inscribed monument is from the 4th century CE in the reign of Emperor Azana. So is the monolithic obelisk. The purpose and meaning of the stone blocks are unknown. The monument is inscribed in three languages, Gers or Classical Ethiopian, Sabian, a tongue of South Arabia, now Yemen, and Greek. It expresses the king's gratitude to God for his battlefield victories. These records of stone and parchment testify to a flourishing written culture during Ethiopia's Great Aksumite period from the 1st through to the 8th century CE and accelerated with Christianity's arrival in the 4th century. Ethiopia was the second country in the world to make Christianity its state religion and it quickly spread among its people. Young men were taught to read and write and preach the word of God and transcribe holy books. For this, they needed parchment, the main writing material of the time, and still used today for religious books. Goat and sheep hides typically were used to make parchment. These practices have changed little in Ethiopia since ancient times. In this video, we present the parchment making process, the writing tools, and the skilled craftsmen called scribes who created them. And we present some of the varied Christian and Islamic manuscripts produced over the centuries. Islam is Ethiopia's second religion. When the Prophet Muhammad and his followers were prosecuted for their new faith in Mecca in the 7th century, he advised new converts to go to Ethiopia where they would find a fair and just king who does not wrong anyone. Parchment making Soak the freshly flayed animal skin in water for 3 to 5 days. Remove the skin from the water and stretch it over a wood frame as shown. While the skin is under tension, scrape off the fat and connective tissue with the curved parchment knife. After the skin completely dries, polish with a pumice rock and fine abrasive powder. Wash the skin and let dry. Next, flip the frame over and with the parchment adds, scrape the hair. Afterward, polish the skin with pumice and abrasive. Wash the dust and let the skin dry. The finished parchment is cut to size, lightly ruled with a sharp scoring device, and is ready for writing. Goat skin for books, sheep skin for scrolls. Scribes and manuscript making. Priests known as Kes, Marigitas who are teachers, and Detaras, a class of learned men who perform both sacred and secular tasks, do the scribing and manuscript making. They may write parts of the Old Testament, prayer books, gospels, psalms and hymns. Some manuscripts tell the stories of Jesus and Mary and angels and saints, both Ethiopian and biblical. Many scribed works are illustrated and illuminated to provide a picture of the people and places described in the stories. Some of these learned men, particularly the Ditaras, create scrolls with biblical verses for their healing and protective power against disease or magic spells. The scrolls are folded many times, sewn in leather cases and worn on the neck as amulets. The writing tools consist of reed pens and horn inkwells for different colours inks, all of which are prepared by the scribe from soot, plants and red earth. The manuscripts. There are believed to be between 200,000 to 500,000 parchment manuscripts in Ethiopia across monasteries, churches and private collections, with still more in remote abbeys and parishes. Thousands were lost to wars over the centuries. The Abba Garima Bible is considered the earliest example of bookmaking. Written in the 5th century, it is the oldest sacred parchment in the country and the oldest illuminated Christian scripture in the world. 
It contains over 100 books, considerably more than the King James Bible which it predates by nearly 800 years. Despite the Bible's age, its colours remain vivid, as you will see in these images. Islamic Manuscripts In 615 AD, 100 of Muhammad's family and followers made Islam's first hijira from Mecca to Ethiopia, where the Prophet had believed would be a safe place for them. As expected, the Aksumite King Negash welcomed the refugees and gave them land in a town that bears their name. The settlers built there the first mosque in Africa, considered by some the second most sacred Islamic site after Mecca. A burial site near that mosque is thought to contain the remains of those early Muslims. More Muslims settled throughout the country. Its largest Islamic community lives in eastern Ethiopia, where the city of Harar remains one of Islam's holiest sites. As in Christian communities, Muslims learned to make parchments and writing tools. They educated their young men to read and write holy text, mainly the Quran. The scribes copied the sacred book to reach all the Prophet's followers with his teachings. Although Amharic became Ethiopia's common language, Gez continued the language of the Ethiopian Tuado Church as is Arabic for Islamic mosques. In summary, Ethiopia was the fertile ground where the seeds of the world's great religions were sown. Before most nations knew of it, Christianity flourished in Ethiopia, which opened its doors to Islam before all of Africa and most of Arabia. Judaism too found in Ethiopia its first home outside the Middle East. Handcrafted parchments, reed pens and inks transformed Ethiopia from a culture writ in stone to one of manuscripts where scribes fashioned books that spread knowledge and strengthened communities of faith. The durability of parchments ensured that the nation's spiritual life endured and flourished. We are indebted to the gifted men who toiled alone creating parchment, affixing their words and images and binding their artistry into books for the benefit of all.